Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. We have managed to hold on to our nice weekends despite a series of cold fronts so far this season, but that will change this weekend when the next front is expected to arrive. Katie Blake has details on when exactly that will hit and how cold it's actually going to get coming up in your weather authority forecast. They see it as defending the Alamo defenders, a group of protesters closing ranks today around the Cenotaph, a monument in Alamo Plaza bearing the names of those killed in the Battle of the Alamo. The monument is supposed to be relocated by a few hundred feet as part of a larger plan to redesign Alamo Plaza. But as protesters began what their leader said will be a 24 hour demonstration, they told our Garrett Berger they aren't ready to let that happen. This is the monument to our Alamo defenders. This is their only tombstone. Although it's empty, it's still their tombstone. A tombstone this group doesn't want to see moved. Not one inch. Not one inch. The names of the dead Alamo defenders on this cenotaph mean something to all of the protesters here today, but even more to some of them. Three of my ancestors are eternally me memorialized on this. They've shed their blood for Texas. They've shed their blood since they came here in 1835. The city council and the historic and Design Review Commission have okayed the relocation, but those assembled believe the monument, commissioned in 1936, 100 years after the Texas Revolution, belongs where it's at. And we don't trust the city of San Antonio as well to try to start disassembling this, break it, and say, oops, we made a mistake, we don't have the money to put it back up. Brandon Burkhart, the president of This Is Texas Freedom Force, which organized the demonstration, said protesters believe that at least at one point, the relocation process was supposed to begin overnight tonight, but that the date has since changed. And we'll defend our Alamo defenders. And if they bring cranes out here, we're not scared of going to jail. We'll step in the way of it. We weren't able to confirm when the relocation is supposed to begin. But beyond trying to stop a relocation themselves, Burkhardt says they hope to get Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick's attention and get him to intervene. And hopefully he can step in and let the people vote. Because if the vote happens, the Texans are going to say don't move it. Not one inch. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. A tragic situation. That's how the Bear County Sheriff is describing the death of an inmate. 61-year-old Stephen Wayne Cole died at the Bear County Jail last night. He'd been in jail since Sunday. Sheriff Javier Salazar says the initial call that led to his arrest was for shoplifting, but Cole ended up being arrested for criminal trespassing. Salazar says they believe Cole died of natural causes. He also says Cole was in bad health and used drugs. In my honest opinion, this gentleman should not have been here uh, in the Bear County Jail to the tune of 60 to $66 a day um, on a low bond. Cole needed just $40 to bond out of jail. Salazar says he was in the process of being approved for a personal recognizance bond, which would not have required him to pay anything, but that approval did not come soon enough. The medical examiner will make the final determination for Cole's exact cause of death. A holiday family gathering coming to an end with a police officer getting hit in the head and the man officers say is responsible in jail. Today we now know that the man who was taken into custody could be facing multiple charges. Max Massey was on the scene of the arrest and spoke with police. This is 46-year-old Abel Rivera. A young lady here said her boyfriend had molested her 19-year-old daughter and she wanted the police here. This is the reason police responded here to the 2100 block of Harper's Ferry on the west side on Christmas morning. But the situation only escalated once police arrived. We go back to the kitchen, try and talk to him. Uh, he had already cut the left side of his uh, neck when we came in there. And we saw the knife on the counter, so we grabbed the knife, put it away from him so he couldn't get it again. On the scene of the arrest, police told me that they tried to talk Rivera down, but he was too intoxicated. So eventually they just had to go in and try to apprehend him. In the process, our sergeant got hit in the face. Uh, his, left, his left ear is cut right now from being hit. And then we we're able to put handcuffs on him and restrain him. Officers on the scene telling me that alcohol played a big factor and they have advice for any more celebrations this holiday season. I would say just stay calm and uh, watch your alcohol intake because that seems to be the majority of the problem. As for Rivera, he has been formally charged with assault of a peace officer causing bodily injury, a second degree felony. Records show he was also arrested on a charge of sexual assault contact, but that charge does not appear on his formal booking record. It is possible that charge could be filed against him at large with the Bear County District Attorney's Office. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 
San Antonio police trying to sort out exactly what happened on the city's southeast side after a man showed up at his neighbor's house with knife wounds. That man telling officers that he woke up in the 4300 block of Roland Avenue to see his wife with a knife. Officers say he suffered cuts to his arms and legs. He went to the neighbor's house to get help and we're told that he was taken to Bamsey and is expected to be OK. Officers are still investigating what led up to the attack and have not said what charges the woman might be facing. Meantime, San Antonio police also investigating after a car slammed into a home on the city's west side. Officers responded to the 1300 block of West Agarita Avenue early this morning. The driver lost control and ran off I-10 and drove right into the living room of this house. The house was being renovated, so no one was home at the time. The driver was not hurt, but police are investigating to see if alcohol was involved. The Bear County Sheriff's Office searching into the night for a man that they say ran off after getting pulled over by deputies. This happening around 930 near I-35 and Redmond Road. According to a sergeant, deputies attempted a traffic stop, but the man jumped out of his vehicle and made a run for it. Deputies called for some help to try to track the guy down. They even brought in some canine officers, but no luck. Deputies eventually had to call off the search. Time saver traffic now. Let's take a live look at the roads out there. Highway 281 and Loop 410. The interchange here as you head westbound on 410. No 6 o'clock commute to talk about this evening. A lot of people probably still enjoying some time off with friends and family for the holidays. So things moving smoothly out there. Have you used the KSAT app lately or tried to? Maybe the stories you were looking for weren't there or what you wanted to watch live. You couldn't find it. Yeah, me too. And I work here. Luckily, my desk is right next to this guy, Colton. He's got a big title. Basically means he's in charge of everything online. So I asked, what's the deal? Our web team wizards did some investigating and found a quick and easy solution. Turns out when we recently updated our website, ksat.com, you might have noticed we made it a whole lot cleaner, sleeker looking. It's a lot faster too, making it easy for you to find exactly what you want when you come to ksat.com. Well, that update means that your ksat news app has to be up to date too. My web buddy Colton showed me how to fix my phone, so now we want to make sure you know that easy steps for a fix too. If you have an iPhone, open the app store, then click your profile icon there in the top right hand corner. Might be your initials, maybe a photo. This one's a selfie from when I went to the Hoover Dam. I loved that trip. Scroll down to see pending updates. Tap update next to the KSAT News app or update all. Android users, we've got you too. You're going to want to open the Google Play Store. Click the menu button, those three horizontal bars in the top left. Then click My Apps. Find the KSAT News app and click Update. If these steps don't seem to work, just delete the app altogether and then re-download it. We have all of these solutions lined out on our website. You can find them right there at KSAT.com. And happy scrolling. Something else that is key to point out, I learned from my web buddy Colton, your operating system on your phone has to be up to date. Too. Ah. Got that little red dot telling you, hey, click update. Got to go ahead and do that one I as well. I am guilty of that. Thank you for letting us know. <laughs> we'll <laughs> be updating. <laughs> I'm here to help, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> we have found on the new KSAT weather app that some folks have been having issues getting multiple alerts at a time. Similar solution, uh -huh. update it or delete it and re-download. So kind of uniform solution there for you. Good to uh, know. We've got, yeah, a cold front coming through the forecast of this weekend. It's not going to really bring in a whole lot of cold air, but it does set us up for a nice day on Sunday. It does look like better chances, though, by New Year's Day next week. We'll talk all about it. Check it on the aquifer down just one-tenth of a foot today, and this is a brutal pollen count. Not only is mountain cedar still high, now mold is also high today with a count of a little over 1,800, so not good for uh, allergy sufferers today. Uh, I do think that we could see mountain cedar drop a little bit tomorrow, but it's been staying pretty elevated. We'll talk about your full weekend forecast and get you a sneak peek of your New Year's Eve forecast coming up. He is almost like a walking history of what happened in our treatment era. How one man is shattering expectations as he lives with diabetes. His story next at six.
But first, news around Texas. An inmate who escaped from an East Texas jail is back behind bars. According to the Gregg County Sheriff's Office, 34-year-old Jace Martin Laws was able to make it out by carving through a brick wall yesterday. Laws had been sentenced to 70 years in prison for two counts of assault on a police officer. Well, jail officials shut down the jail after the escape and the manhunt began. Earlier today, the sheriff's office posting on Facebook that Laws had been located and was back in custody. No other details were given. No Christmas break for Border Patrol agents working in South Texas. On Monday, Rio Grande City officers responded to a call of a pickup truck loaded down with marijuana. When the smugglers saw officers, they say he sped off. During the pursuit, we're told he hit a Border Patrol unit while trying to get away. He eventually ditched the truck and, and the drugs and then ran off. That was more than $350,000 worth of marijuana. The officer behind the wheel of the vehicle was that, was, that was hit rather was not seriously hurt. On Christmas Eve, Border Patrol agents spotted an SUV carrying marijuana. State troopers tried to pull them over, but the driver kept going. The people in the SUV jumped out in the middle of a cane field, but they didn't get far. Three people were arrested and almost 150 pounds of pot were confiscated. And then yesterday, south of Garciasville, officers say they saw half a dozen people carrying bundles of marijuana across the river. Agents moved in. Four people were arrested, but two were able to get away without the drugs. Almost $200,000 worth.